In the field of cloud security, understanding the terminology is crucial to navigating the landscape effectively. In this video, we'll explore some of the most essential security terms, concepts that you will often encounter when working in the cloud. So these ideas form the foundations for how we protect data, manage access and build trust in cloud environments. So let's dive in and understand what each of these terms means and why they matter. The first group of concepts focuses on reducing the risk of unauthorized access to sensitive data. We look at three key ones, privileged access, least privilege and zero trust architecture. So privileged access security. In every organization, some users have higher levels of access than others like system administrators or DevOps engineers. These users can perform critical tasks like troubleshooting, configuration changes or restoring data. The types of access is called privileged access. But here's the challenge. If that access is misused or compromised, it can lead to serious damage. That's why it's important to monitor and manage privileged accounts very carefully using tools like privileged access management systems and strict audit controls. The next one is called the principle of least privilege or POLP for short. The idea is very simple. Every user should have only minimum access they need to do their job, nothing more. For example, a sales representative might need access to the CRM system, but not to finance or infrastructure. By limiting access this way, organizations reduce the risk of data leaks, mistakes and other insider threats. The third concept is zero trust architecture. It's a modern security model based on one simple idea, never trust, always verify. In traditional security models, once you are inside the network, you are trusted. So the zero trust architecture changes that. It assumes that no user or device can be trusted by default, whether they are inside or outside the network. Every access request must be authenticated, authorized and continuously validated. This model is essential for today's cloud environments where users connect from anywhere and on any device. So those three principles, privileged access, least privilege and zero trust form the foundation of identity and access management in the cloud. Now let's move on how organizations defend themselves against cyber threats. The next set of concepts focuses on building a strong security posture and being resilient to attacks. We'll cover three important principles, security by default, security posture and cyber resilience. Security by default means building security into your systems and applications from day one, not as an afterthought. That means security coding practices, identity controls, encryption and compliance checks are all part of development lifecycle. When security is integrated into design and development early on, vulnerabilities are caught sooner and your overall foundation becomes much stronger. Now, security posture. Your security posture represents how ready your organization is to defend against cyber threats. It's like health check for your cloud environments, measuring how strong your policies, controls and response systems are. The strong security posture means you are proactively identifying and fixing risks before attackers can exploit them. Tools like cloud security posture management or CSPM help continuously monitor and improve defenses. Like for example, Prisma is one such example of CSPM tool where a lot of big companies use it to monitor their cloud security posture and cyber resilience. Finally, cyber resilience is all about your organization's ability to withstand and recover from cyber attacks. It's not just about preventing incidents. It's about detecting, responding and recovering quickly when something goes wrong. Cyber resilience includes good backup strategies, well-practiced incident response plans and strong business continuity measures. In simple terms, resiliency is how fast you can bounce back when under attack. Now that we have covered how to prevent and respond to threats, let's talk about core mechanisms that protect your cloud environment day to day. Two of the most important mechanisms to protect cloud resources are firewalls and encryption. Firewalls act like a security guard for your network. It checks all incoming and outgoing traffic based on predefined security roles. If the traffic looks safe, it's allowed. 
If not, it's blocked. This helps protect critical cloud resources like servers, databases, and applications. Firewalls can operate at network layer or an application layer. In the cloud, there are often built-in features like AWS WAF, Azure Firewall, or Google Cloud Armor. Encryption is the process of converting data into unreadable format using an algorithm. Only someone with the right decryption can unlock and read it again. Think of it like writing a secret message in a language that only you and a recipient can understand. If someone interprets it, they won't be able to read it. Protecting the encryption key is critical because that key is the gateway to the original data. So by combining firewalls and encryption with strong identity and access practices, you create multiple layers of defense for your cloud environment. To wrap it up, cloud security isn't about one single tool or feature. It's about combining principles, controls, and technologies to protect data and ensure trust. From least privilege to zero trust, from security by default to cyber resilience, these are the core concepts that every cloud professional should know. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more practical cloud security lessons. In the next video, we'll cover how these concepts are actually implemented in cloud platforms like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Thanks for watching and remember always build with security in mind. Bye.